Hey, it's Brian from Team Aquascapes. And this is not my house, but I wish it was now. We are gonna build a pondless waterfall. The easiest way to learn something is to teach it. We are rocking and rolling on this pond. We appreciate you guys tuning in. Look at this yard. This is absolutely amazing. To come out and be greeted by this waterfall, especially after taking six months to build a project. And that sounds like a long time, because it is. It just is a very, very long time. So we started this project last November, and if you can remember back then, there used to be a small, actually it wasn't that small of a pond, but it was a pond nowhere in comparison to what we have now. But after the homeowners saw our YouTube video, they said, no way are we happy with this. Brian, what can we do with this space? And they really said, you've got an open canvas, do what you wanna do. And so this is what we came up with. You come out this door and I wanted you to be greeted with a waterfall. Not only just a waterfall, but a nice babbly brook type waterfall. And then at the last minute, we decided to throw in our fire rock. And what an awesome feature this is gonna be come later in the fall. Not when it's 110 degrees outside like it is today. <laughs> it was so much fun to sit here. This alone would make 99.99% of the people happy, but not for these guys. They wanted to keep going. They wanted something that blew away the old pond and they could interact with. So we have this overflow. It comes down through a fun little babbly brook waterfall right here. We've got different crossing points here. This first bridge here, and we got these awesome stepping stones that Chris and the guys set last winter, sometime in December. They're massive, and I love them because they're so big that you can actually sit on these and get into the pond really easy. In fact, if you look really close, right here is a very, very rustic stone staircase that takes you all the way down into the very bottom of the pond down here. If you continue across this pathway, remember a pathway, a bridge, or something should always lead to something, they've got what I would call a party deck. It is a big, big patio. Enough room for some intimate seating. I can see actually pulling this right up to the edge of the pond here. I can also see sitting on this edge and falling right in. You can remember too, go all the way back to six months ago, Chris, Jack, the rest of Team Aquascapes was out here putting this giant stone wall in here. And look at how awesome this looks. And it goes all the way, well, you know what? Instead of me telling you about it, hey, Hanson! Go later. Yeah. <laughs> Come over here. Chris, I wasn't here when- Oh, summer! Oh. <laughs> I wasn't here last November when you guys were putting this wall together, but talk a little bit about the wall, jets, and the whole purpose of it, like why, why we did it. Well, I why I take my shoes off, because I'm hot. <laughs> While he takes his, uh, his shoes off, let me explain to you what we did here. The wall was really intended to be kind of this swim up while you're in the pond, but also sit on the edge and dangle your feet all the way down without touching anything and just let the fish kind of swim around, swim between your legs, and just have that interactivity in and out of the pond. So the cool thing about this is this wall goes all the way down to the bottom. So there's not a bunch of rocks stacked behind each other. You're allowed to just sit there, dangle your feet in, and you're not hitting anything. It's an enormous amount of water volume and you can see how much the fish congregate right here. I love the big boulders, how they accent the patio and carry the design element from the rest of the pond and really incorporate it into the patio. And I don't think you get much cooler of a patio space than this. So you touched on like the big boulders and to me, that's what makes it. You can do this wall right here, mm. but if you don't have the stone cut around this, it takes away from the look. Right. But breaking it up with the big boulders looks so good. And then from this side, you even have some boulders cut like halfway into the wall mm -hmm. just to break up the you know, Great Wall of China look. Yeah. Right? It yeah. looks so good. One of the, the easiest parts about this section of the pond was really those circulation jets, right? Because of the design and the straight wall up and down and the, and the draw of water wanting to come across into the intake bay, this would have been an otherwise static area, right yeah. B? We've got a lot of movement coming from the spheres back behind you, which circulates that whole area. Because of this big cutout, this would have been dead. So this pushes everything that way. You've got the waterfall up there, which pushes everything together. And then if you really watch this debris, everything is moving right through here, back over into our intake bay. 
something different we did on this one too. We put a skimmer on our intake bait. So a lot of people don't do that, but it just makes it easier for the homeowner to collect all that debris. Almost every time we put an intake bay in, it's because we don't have enough real estate in our skimmer box to put in the multiple pumps we wanna put in. So we put them in pondless vaults instead. Here we've got a pondless vault with two pumps in it and then a small pump inside the skimmer box just to grab all that debris. If you come over here, normally on an intake bay, the debris comes over here and kind of creates this whirlpool type effect and that debris just sits here and then you're supposed to come in and scoop that stuff. Here, all that debris gets in here and you can see this tiny little stuff. All that stuff's coming in here rapidly but then the skimmer box is grabbing it. So you can follow some of that, those little particles go right into that skimmer box. With an intake bay, that doesn't happen. So I kind of like the best of both worlds right here. So to all you pond nerds out there that really want to understand more of the guts and how this thing operates, we've got a skimmer box, we got a pondless vault, we have a wetland filter and we have a bio falls up there. All of this is powered by three pumps. So we have a five to nine pump, which feeds that waterfall up there. The reason we have such a big pump is because we spread that waterfall out and we have granite boulders. The water tends to want to hug the surface of them. So I wanted to put a bigger pump on there, big enough to really get that water to come off of those rounder rocks. Then we have a four to seven that goes from here all the way over to the spheres over there. That not only operates the spheres, but we have split off of that line and it goes down into our wetland. We'll show you in a second. The third pump we have on here is an aqua surge two to four. And the reason I went with the aqua surge, the aqua surge feeds our jets. Sometimes, sometimes, not often, but every now and then those jets, because the line goes from a two inch line down to a three quarter inch line. If a small little piece of mulch gets sucked in by a solid handling pump, it can clog up those jets. That two to four aqua surge pump has a screen on it, eliminating anything like this ever getting sucked into the pump, making sure our jets never ever get clogged. So those three pumps run all the time. The jet pump doesn't have to run all the time. They can put that on a timer. They could hook it up to the smart control plug and literally turn it on when they want, turn it off when they want. In the winter, they'll run it all the time. But here, they just need to run it when they want to pull in debris or circulate that area of the pond. The one pump that does have to run 24 seven is that four to seven that feeds the spheres and the wetland over there. Why don't we go to my next favorite part over there by Chris and let him talk to you a little bit about the spheres and why we put those in where we did. Chris, this is my first time seeing the spheres. And I think the last time I was out here, we just kind of played around with the placement of it. Mm -hmm. Talked a little bit about how we wanted to like gravel out the backside of it yep. and bring the gravel almost a third the way up. I just love it. And I think the spheres to me are just a nice element over here instead of a waterfall because it gives so much more height and lets them see stuff from inside the office all the way from the fire pit over there where a waterfall might have got kind of lost over in sure here. yeah definitely the the three different sizes makes all the difference in the world I think it would have looked really strange had we gone with all three of them. it's a haunted <gasps> pond but I like the asymmetrical nature of just kind of the layout. And then some of the massive boulders that are just kind of peppered in and then all that gravel. Yeah, very, I, very simple. yeah, I love the overall size of those things. They just look so good. They make such a huge statement for really just the little water. Mm -hmm. I mean, because you've got half the water going to this yep. and then the other half going to a wetland filter that doesn't even look like a wetland filter. No, it doesn't. So and down in here, you would never know it, but right here, I'm standing on top of three feet of rock and gravel and aqua block, yep. right? The centipede runs like this, and our snorkel, the clean out area for the wetland, is right underneath that. There's the cap for that. So, once a year, when you need to get in here and pump all that dirty stuff out, you just move a couple hand sized rocks and you can get down in there. You'd have no idea that this is the main filter for the entire pond, and it's working really well because that pond is spotless. Obviously, you see Brian walking in and out of the pond in all the different areas. We've got shallow water. <laughs> You've got shallow water, you've got kind of that intermediate depth, that two foot, two and a half foot depth, and obviously you've got the much deeper section up against the patio. But it's so cool watching the fish swim all the way back into the wetland filter. And if you remember in some of the previous videos, we talked about some of the construction and using some of these massive granite boulders and utilizing the flat tops on them. So there's all these informal entrances in and amongst the pond. You've got one over by the Peekaboo Bridge. You've got one here right off of this wall. And when the water is, is crystal clear, 
here is it is super easy to figure out a way in and out of the pond and to have those flat tops on those granite boulders really, really helps. Speaking of interactivity, I think one of my favorite, my personal favorite parts, really trying to fulfill Brian's vision and doing this peekaboo bridge using these two massive slabs of Black Hills rustic stone. These are big pieces of flagging, real thick, but the customer came into the store and saw one of our Pondless waterfalls that has a bridge very similar to this, just on a scaled down version, and they actually coined it the Peekaboo Bridge because you can see the water ripping between the two pieces. They really, really wanted to see that happen, and I think we nailed it with the execution, but I love being able to walk across this and seeing the flowing water and the fish and everything swim through here. It's just such a cool element. So leading out from the Peekaboo Bridge, we come to yet another bridge and it's relatively close to the other one but it's a much different feel when you walk over this solid slab what I love about it too is as you come over it you have the waterfall flanking you on one side and then you look down and you've got this cobbly bouldery babbly brook shooting out on the other side so not only is it interactive in the water it's also interactive audibly you can go to multiple spots around the yard and not hear the same sound of the moving water which I think is such a cool element in any water feature design is being able to change it up and really understand how you can make the difference sounds creating different moving water. Do you love it, B? Dude, I think it's so amazing. Literally, I don't know if you heard me, but I want this on. Like, this section is so awesome. And then when I'm done with this section, I look at the Peekaboo Bridge, you know, and I love that they coined that phrase. I love that the waterfalls, like, disappear around the corner. When you're up by that upper patio, you've got the fire rock and the other waterfall. But behind us, you have a wetland with another little stepstone pathway and the spheres. If it looks this good now, imagine what this thing is going to look yeah. like in another couple years. Brian, I gotta ask you, and I'm sure our viewers are thinking along the same lines, what does a project like this go for? This is a huge investment, right? And, and I actually remember talking with the customers, you know, well over a year ago and coming back here, I threw out a price and they said, listen, we're not nervous about the price. We were thinking of doing a custom in-ground swimming pool. And custom in-ground swimming pools range anywhere from $80,000 to $200,000. So without telling our viewers exactly what our customers spent, it's somewhere in the range of a custom swimming pool. It's not the $200,000 custom swimming pool with slides and all that other kind of stuff, but it's up there. I mean, Chris, we do a set of three spheres for $15,000, and that's just the spheres. So it kind of gives you an idea, but this pond's got everything. Three different crossing areas, right? The, the fire rock yep. up there, colored lights, which takes it, this wall, which is engineered with all kinds of geo grid and other stuff to make sure it's not yep. going to fall over. Massive, massive granite boulders. These are not hand-sized granite boulders. These are 2,000 pound to 3,000 pound granite boulders yep. sitting in here. A lot went into it. Normally, it wouldn't take us six months. Normally, a project like this would take us about three weeks. So it's a it's a huge investment. I just want to say thank you to our customers. They've been super, super patient. I know they found us from YouTube and they're going to get to see this on YouTube. So hey. You you guys were awesome. Thank you so much. The rest of you, tell us what you think about the new format. We're gonna try to come out here and do more of a project showcase, I think, with a lot of these projects from now on. You'll do some, I'll do some. If we can get to do them together, that'd be even more fun. I really feel like throwing you in the pond, but I see you got your boots on, so I'll, I'll leave you alone. And I have my phone, I have my phone. You don't have, have your boots I on. I got my big phone. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, you know what to do. Like, comment, subscribe, tell all your friends, tell your neighbors, tell your siblings, whoever you hang out with and we'll keep doing this. Hey, good job. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> Thanks again.